friends, welcome back to Brick by Brick. I'm your host, Adam Ward, and today we are talking about <sighs> taking a break. We're talking about peace and tranquility, and I've designed a few different builds that really bring me peace and tranquility, and hopefully will bring some for you as well. These Zen gardens, that you can add a cactus or a bonsai tree or even a real live succulent to. And if you have a bad track record with keeping plants alive, these Lego plants are for you. And even a succulent, it doesn't take a lot of attention or care. It's basically like the cat of the plant world. You don't need to give it much water or attention. You probably love it more than it loves you. But with any of these builds, what you can do to your workspace, your home, or any space you like, you can bring a little bit of peace, a little bit of tranquility. Because life can get crazy hectic. You know it, I know it. So let's build some Lego little plants, bring in some peace. Now these three gardens, they all have pretty much the same base. Basically, the same base. And what's cool about the base is it's just a 16 by 16 plate. So for this base, we're gonna use purple. And we're gonna start with our cactus. So what you wanna do first is go all the way around the border. You wanna do this so the little bricks or pieces that you use to imitate the stones don't go spilling everywhere. So I really like these beveled one by twos and one by fours. And they come in tan, brown, white, black, maybe a few other colors, but they give it like a really cool naturey look. And we're just gonna go all the way around. Now our retaining wall is all set. It's time to shift our attention to the center of the plate. Now what's really cool about these 16 by 16 base plates, if you're trying to find the center, all you have to do is look, because there's a tiny little dot in the middle. So you don't have to count how many studs in or align it or spend a whole lot of time, you know, worrying about whether you've actually found the center. Just look for the itty bitty dot. Once you found your itty bitty dot, I like to use a two by two jumper plate. And this goes right on top of the center. And then around that jumper plate, what we're gonna drop is a few different tiles. The cool thing about surrounding our jumper plate and tiles is that when we put our plant in place, we'll be able to tweak it just a little bit. If we want it square, we can have it square. If we want it on a diagonal, we can put it on a diagonal. If we want it on some angle in between the two, we can do that. So we're gonna use eight tiles, go all the way around our jumper plate. Kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. So now that we've got our jumper plate and our tiles in place, we're gonna surround it with more of these beveled one by twos. All right, and now for a pop of color, we're gonna put a layer of plates in between the bottom row of our retaining wall and the top row. And you could do this in multiple colors if you really wanted, but I'm just gonna choose this one color. And then on top of these plates, we're gonna do another row of bricks. There we go. So now the base is complete. So for our cactus, we're basically just using one by lime green bricks. I love the lime green. So our cactus is seven bricks on each side. So seven bricks on one side and seven bricks on the other side. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take two three by threes and leave a little space in between, take another three by three, place it right in the center, and then we have our seven across. Now we just need seven in this direction. So we already have three, we need four more. So we grab a one by two and another one by two. And that's how we get this cool multiplication sign that is the base of our cactus. And I'm gonna go up one level and all we need to do is shift it 90 degrees. So instead of putting our three by three on top of the old one, we just turn it, snap it like that. And these one by threes, boop, snap in right there and like that. And we have our one by twos. And as we alternate, as we go up the body of the cactus, it's just gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. This cactus is here to stay, my friends. So two, one by two, one by two, one by three, one by three, one by three in the middle. One by three, one by three, one by two, one by two. Now we are at four bricks high. And I think that's a pretty good height for the base of our cactus. We wanna pick it up and put it inside of our garden we can already see that we're clearing the perimeter. So we could even add another row to the perimeter or a bunch of tiles if you wanna give it that really clean finish. And we know that anything we build off to the side will still be safe. So now it's time to move on to our cactus arms. 
We've got a bunch of different fun pieces. We've got the one by three by three curvy pieces for the top. We've got these little jewels that are gonna be our flowers. One by one rounded bricks and one by two inverted slopes. They're gonna help us build the smaller little arms and offshoots of our main cactus arm. We've also got a couple jumper plates and some tiles to smooth out any little area we want to look nice and smooth. And then of course, we've got a bunch of our lime bricks. Now these are all one bys. We have one by four, one by three, one by two, and one by one. And there's not an exact science to making a cactus. You know, you look at a cactus in the world or any tree, it's not symmetrical. You don't have to worry about matching the left side with the right side. Kind of just start playing with it. Make the arms as big or as tall or as wide or as short as you like. And as you start building your cactus, you know, maybe the cactus helps you out, make some decisions. So once we come up from the base, we want to start going out a little bit. So let's throw that on there and throw that in there. And then maybe we use a little one by two slope to come up a bit. It's our first little cactus arm. And maybe this arm is just a little guy. And this one's got a flower. It's a small arm, but it's already in bloom. Just kind of building, playing, not being too worried about what it looks like or how big our arms are. And there's so many different pieces you can use to create little miniature arms and flowers. I really like the inverted one by twos. You can also use regular one by two slopes. You'll see I'm using these little gem pieces for the flowers, but any sort of one by two rounded stud or one by two rounded tile. There's a bunch of cool pieces you could use. Or if you've got some lime snot bricks, you would have those be in the side of the cactus and then just, just put one by one right up on the side of it. We're gonna put some flowers on these smaller branches or arms, but not on the top. The top one hasn't flowered yet. Let's give some little arms here. One there. Let's see. Let's do a one by one and one by one there. And in the middle, another inverted one by two. And now we we'll use some of our remaining bricks left over just to fill in the base. And the base doesn't have to be taller than the arms. It can be shorter than the arms. It can be the same height as the arms. Totally up to you. And then we've got our three one by ones. Just two that go right in there. But I think that cactus is pretty complete. I can grab our base, bring it back over, and plop it down. Friends, I gotta say, I think our cactus is looking really great. This one is blooming, it's happy. The only thing left to do is to fill in the perimeter with some complementary colors. So a really cool way to do that is just to use some loose bricks. Here I used a one by one orange rounded plate, but you use whatever piece, whatever color your heart desires. But we're not gonna fill in this base because it is time to leave the Southwest and head to the Far East. My friends, it is bonsai time. So for the bonsai, we're gonna put away the lime and we are going to break out more of these one by two beveled bricks. And this is how we're gonna make the trunk of our bonsai tree. Now, the trunk of our bonsai tree has a base that's three wide and three long. You might be thinking, oh, but these are one by twos. How in the world do we get there? Boom, shaka, laka, my friends, just like that. And then what we do is we just attach each one from the previous level by shifting our bricks over just one spot. We're just gonna repeat that move a couple more times. Give our bonsai tree a really nice, strong base. We also have this three by three plate. Three by three plate is awesome. They're kind of rare, so if you don't have one, you can just build one using smaller pieces. But if you've got a three by three plate, you can just take your base, and snap it right on top. And if you build one using smaller pieces, you'll have to go two plates deep, but that's no big deal. And that will allow us to center our bonsai tree and turn it any direction we want. We have a few more pieces. And now what we can start to do is to jut out little pieces. We've got the beginning of some baby branches. Now the bulk of our bonsai tree is gonna be up top. Like our bonsai tree is a stalk of broccoli or a big afro. But it's fun to have a little indication of some branches on some lower levels. In general, I think a good height for a bonsai tree is about 10 bricks tall. Let's see where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just a couple more levels. And as we're reaching basically the top of the tree, don't be afraid to really go out in a bunch of different directions all at once. Because the more surface area we create up top on the tree, the more we'll be able to build our branches and put on our fun colors and our different shades of green. We'll really be able to make our tree big and beautiful and interesting. So you might be thinking to yourself, Adam, you've built so many of these things, you're going by a system, or you know what you're doing, or you have an idea, my friends. I promise you, I don't. I'm just grabbing pieces and kind of putting them where it feels like they belong. You know, there's a spot, here's a spot. And that's a really good technique to really make it feel natural. If you're trying to truly imitate how a tree or how a plant grows, random is where it's at. Friends, our trunk is complete, our branches are complete. Now it's time to get some of the foliage. The lovely, lovely lime green, dark green, and sand green pieces. So much like with a base, there's no wrong way to apply foliage. So I'm just gonna take some of these one by four lime plates and just start attaching them. Sometimes right on top of each other, sometimes off just a little bit. It's just nice to spin your tree around and attach some pieces. So I wanna just keep on spinning the tree. The tree is getting super dizzy. I'm just applying pieces. And I'm doubling and tripling up the plates that are closest to the center of the tree. And that way we get this cool domed feeling. So I'm using all lime green, but if you don't have enough of one color, you can use multiple colors. The pieces we're putting on top, we're gonna to be using this standard classic Lego green, and then also the sand green. Use whatever colors you like. So I may not be done applying the lime green pieces, but I'm just gonna start adding some of these tiles. And seeing where the tiles go, where they land and how they sit, that'll inform some of the decisions I make and how many more uh, plates I have to add. So we've got these two pieces sticking out, but I'm feeling like this area could use a little bit more. So even though the tiles are already on, I'm gonna grab some more plates and attach them to the underside of the tile. And I'll, I'll put my finger on top so I don't break it. I'll add that just like that. And then I'm gonna do one more. And if I wanna add more to the bottom, I can always flip my tree over and see if there's any place that looks like it could use some reinforcing. Maybe something like that. Keep on spinning, keep on adding tiles, finding little nooks and crannies to put some bricks down in. So I'm not even really looking at the top as I'm adding these pieces because I'm confident that they'll end up in the right spot. There we go. We've added some fun dimension to our bonsai tree. Our bonsai tree is complete. The only thing we could do to add any more to this build would be to fill in the area between the two walls. So we could use rounded one by one oranges like we did with the cactus or a different color or a different type of piece. We could even use sand. Yeah, real live sand, because Lego, as far as I know, doesn't make sand yet. Speaking of real, if you're excited about bringing an actual living thing into your build, you can use a succulent. This is just a two by two inch succulent that I got down at the nursery. Now, the stones I use for this one, are these really cool little corner one by one panels. And you can see the succulent, the bonsai, the cactus I just made, the cactus from earlier, the old bonsai tree. And these are just some examples. There's no wrong way to build. And whatever you end up with is great because it's really the process of building and discovery and figuring things out, whether they don't work or whether they do work. That's where the magic is. So having these things around is wonderful and building them can be just as wonderful. My Zen friends, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see even more Brick by Brick, then just click on the box that magically appeared right here as if sent from the heavens. To subscribe to Soul Pancake, subscribe to Soul Pancake. That's what you gotta do. And if you wanna see really cool Lego stuff that I make every day, Follow at Peace and Bricks on the Instagram. Okay? That's all I gotta say. I'm just gonna stand here while the music plays. Oh my god, I'm rapping. <laughs>